Ah yes, the second time that I filmed this video because the first time I forgot to hit record. So as 3D printing has become more and more popular, we have seen an increase in the number of manufacturers that have entered the scene. Of course, this is a positive thing. But because we're still in the early stages of the technology, there is a lot of garbage to sift through. You can relate this similarly to the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store about a decade ago, when you could just scroll for days and just constantly see really bad applications. <laughs> So today I'm going to be showing you the LotMax ET and LotMax is one of those tiny companies that used to dump garbage into the market. And this machine really perplexes me because it is smack in the middle of what the f is this and okay this is actually kind of cool. Now I hold absolutely no relation to LotMax so this is going to be the absolute most raw version of a video you can watch. That being said, my primary goal here is just to do a product showcasing rather than a full-on review. My friend Ross over at Fohammer Creations did send me this printer before I package it back up and send it to him across the pond. So if you guys are interested in additional content with this machine, I highly recommend you go check out his channel. And I also highly recommend you check out the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Now the great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials, you can also print Peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. And in order to provide the highest quality service prior to printing, PCBWay is actually going to do a full model analysis of the file you upload. That will ensure when your print arrives, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. Now, let's go back to the Lot Max ET and tear it apart. Now, in my recent videos, I've been hitting hard that I want manufacturers to branch out and try different things. And, well, this printer is doing that. So the first thing that anyone is going to notice when they see this machine is the extraordinarily bright LEDs, and that just makes a very natural starting place. So maybe I don't understand the mindset of this newest generation, but I don't believe that we need to be sticking LEDs into every single product that we own. In this particular case, it's just a flare that really adds no value, especially because these aren't even configurable, at least to my knowledge. So to me, usually an overabundance of LEDs is an eyesore, although I will admit with the lights out, this does kind of look pretty cool. And to pedal back on the whole what the f is this? Let me explain just a little further. So I did just mention the lights, but what about the overall styling of the Lot Max ET? This thing is clearly from the future, and if you check out their website and their marketing for this machine, well, they even state that themselves. But I am really confused because no one was asking for a printer to be designed like a spaceship, and if someone did, then I definitely was not in the room. And why does the screen house and build blade have this absolutely awful design printed on it. In my personal opinion, if you removed these designs, turned the LEDs off, and just did a complete redesign of the hot end fan shroud, this machine would look really good. And one thing you can't see is how monstrously heavy this machine is. The delivered package comes in at 19 kilograms or roughly 42 pounds. If I had more time with this machine, I would absolutely turn this thing on its side, unscrew the base plate, and look inside to figure out what was causing all of that weight. Now one question that I have is why the x-axis rides on beefy linear rails and the y-axis on dual rods if the intended audience is going to be the younger generation based on the LEDs and that printed design. Well considering that intended audience, this kind of seems like an unnecessary blend of performance and design cues. But the real answer to me is unknown. But one thing that I do know is that the performance is quite good. I have found that the printing speeds are slightly slower than my Anchor Make devices, but for a bed slinger, 
I am definitely not gonna complain. However, for me personally, there is one really big flaw that is gonna be a nail in the coffin. This machine makes so many noises, all of them are loud and none of them are pleasant. When printing, the machine peaks at around 67 dB and it also has extruder gear clicking that is a constant 60 dB. That drives me absolutely nuts, but it's not even the worst part because when you click the power button, the printer doesn't actually turn off. It goes into a power saving mode and an internal fan does happen to turn on. That internal fan brings the ambient room volume from 34 dB up to 40 dB. And for those of you that don't measure room volumes, that increase is very noticeable. So in some of my recent videos, I have mentioned that manufacturers are releasing printers that aren't ready for prime time, but the LotMax ET definitely takes the cake. The screen itself is connected with a wire in the back of the machine rather than the front or the side like some of its competitors. And the SD card slot that is built into the screen doesn't even work, so in order to load a print file you have to plug a USB in which happens to also be in the back of the machine. Given the 19 kilogram weight of this machine, trust me, you definitely don't want to be turning the machine around to plug a USB in. And another thing to mention is that the screen doesn't even have a mounting place. It just sits sadly on the counter. Now during shipping, this printer's motherboard broke free from its housing and became totally unusable without reseating its position. Also, the hot end has a couple heat set inserts that began to pull out as I was doing the initial assembly process. Now it is important to note that this machine is a prototype unit, so some of, or maybe even all of these issues that I mentioned are because of that. Though I still wanted to bring them up because it is something to take into consideration. Now overall this thing is definitely an oddball and it is the ugly duckling in the back of the line. But at the end of the day the question still remains, does it have a place in the market? And the answer is possibly because the prints that come off do look better than average and they are printed faster than average. These parts don't have the best quality but they definitely have a passable level of quality. And if you do have a need for a late Laser as well, this machine does come stock with a 20 watt diode module. Although I personally think that lasers and 3D printers need to be held as separate devices, so I never even attached it to test it out. Now at the time of filming, this machine is not yet on Kickstarter, but it will be very soon. Let me know in the comment section down below if you plan to back this machine, and given its crazy feature set, let me know what you like best. Thank you guys so much much for sticking around to the end of the video and if you loved it like it if you want to see more hit the subscribe button and otherwise thank you thank you thank you i will see you in the next video